I think if I could give one um, recommendation to the startup community in Bangladesh and in Dhaka in particular, is that be aware that a lot of your fellow countrymen are coming back. I've been in Canada for 40 plus years. Now I'm back in Bangladesh. I'm investing in Bangladesh and I'm not the only one. There's a big crowd of people who are heading back to give back. I think if a synergy can be created between the people from Dhaka right now, the youth of Dhaka who are looking to do startups and if they reach out to people who are coming back to Dhaka to help start up and be a part of that scene. I think when these two types of people meet and they have a common place and as this documentary is trying to provide, I think that would be the best thing that could happen. And as far as internet speed and other stuff is concerned, it'll all be taken care of. There's a lot of people coming in, there's a lot of money being invested. I think these are going to be things of the past. In Bangladesh, everything is centered to Dhaka. So many of the services, including entertainment, education, health care, you get only in Dhaka. So a lot of people are unconnected and they don't get access to you know, these basic needs and basic services. So 3G for sure will help shorten you know, this distance. It will help the unconnected people to be connected. And uh, you know, entrepreneurs and uh, the business houses, they can really come forward to shorten this bridge. Outside, startups often look very glamorous, and it's actually a very fun challenge, but it really is a challenge. I think sometimes people don't realize from the outside how much work it really is to really build something, to build a product, to build a business, to build uh, a community with your colleagues and your employees, but ultimately it shouldn't feel like coming to work. So while we have to do a lot and go through a lot and we've been through many challenges and hardships, Every day it feels like we come in and spend time with the people we really care about and I always say we get paid to hang out with our friends. And I think we always talk about the challenges but as soon as you have one side of the coin, you also have the other side of the coin. Because wherever there are challenges, there are equal, if not more, opportunities. And so while most people come to Bangladesh and they see problems left, right, front and center, an entrepreneur, he'll come here and he'll be excited because he'll see opportunity. He'll see a problem to solve everywhere he looks. And I think that's the magic of entrepreneurship. And I think that's the potential of Bangladesh. Our journey started across the road in that pile of rubble you see there. So that pile of rubble used to be a building. And in that building, there used to be a clinic and in the garage of that clinic, uh, me and Shafkat, we interviewed our first engineers and designers. And we're very happy um, looking back at our history to now have three offices around the world, uh, in New York, in London, and most recently, this building is now gone and this new building has now emerged and we just moved into our new office looking down at the birthplace um, of where we started. I think the biggest problem are mentors and which I believe a documentary like this is uh, taking a lead on trying to provide the importance of a startup scene in a country like Dhaka or Bangladesh and I think mentors would come out and coach the young people of the country on what the startup life is like, what to look out for, so that they can move forward and uh, claim their right position in the startup scene. So we heard about successes and challenges in startup life. We also heard about angel investors. But what about the other players in the startup ecosystem? 
there are organizations that hold hackathons, startup pitches, and co-share spaces where people can work together. What did these people have to say about this brewing startup community? And what's their role in all of this? One, two, three, start Startup Bash is a great initiative, a platform for young entrepreneurs to come together. It's an opportunity for them to meet new people, get ideas, and get help, and even network with people. So I think this is the start to great and wonderful things for Bangladesh. It started in Dhaka, but I think this will move to the rural parts of Bangladesh and come up with brilliant ideas, and the ideas will turn into organizations. I saw people pushing the envelope and thinking big, uh, thinking that Bangladesh should be a player in the global economy commensurate with its size. This is the seventh largest country in the world. GBG or Google Business Groups is an initiative of Google. It's a part of their global outreach program. And there are currently more than 120 different GBG chapters all over the world. And we here, we represent GBG Dhaka. So the main objective of GBG Dhaka is to increase the adoption of internet in Bangladesh. And how do we do that? We do that through events. As we have organized so many events in the past one and a half year, we've identified amazing local startups that are already doing things, and they're not just doing things, but they're actually taking it to the world. Altogether, 350 participants joined the hackathon, and this was all volunteer work that they gave 36 hours of their time for our cause to make water and sanitation sector better in Bangladesh. Right now we are hosting a whole bunch of coding competitions, entrepreneurship competitions, and, uh, and it's not really happening here all over the Dhaka city and other places in the country. But we want to take it to the next step. We will have our own in-house mentors who come, will come from different business backgrounds who can sort of mentor these new entrepreneurs or one of the entrepreneurs. And, at the, and also at the, at the end of the cycle, we will also connect them to potential investors, different kind of angel investors, institutional investors, so it can be a one-stop shop for them from start to finish. We hosted the, uh, the event in January in 2013, and it was a, for me it was a very successful event, given the fact that I had very my standards were in the sense that I was, I just wanted to see more people coming into the startup scene and I, I think in that regard this was a successful event. Uh, the ideas that were coming up, some of them were very interesting, some of them were okayish, but I think the important thing is when people were finally speaking up about ideas, usually what you see in Bangladesh is business plan competitions, people just in writing a very nice proposal and submitting it and not doing anything about it. But for them to be there and then actually come up with a basic demo of the, of the whole thing, was for many people a uh, very big first step. And I think that was something that really inspired us to continue in this particular stream. Shetu, we are an organization, we help youth to start a tech-based you know, uh, startup or entrepreneurship uh, through education, finance, and other activities. Basically, as I traveled around the world, you know, in, on, for business, I didn't really see a whole lot of Bangladeshi tech startups in the international arena. So I looked at, I researched, I looked at the market, and I really saw that there is a lack of ecosystem, a lack of structured curriculum slash accelerators in Bangladesh like we have in the States. If you look at US, you have tech stars, Y Combinator, there isn't anything yet. So 
That's how Shetu was born. They need help uh, first in validating, validating their idea. Is it really a good idea? Is there a market for this idea? And next, they need help, you know, access to mentors who can actually help them build the product or the services that they are thinking about. And then they need funding as well. How the system know that you are actually going from A to B? We were planning on using an online advertising scheme. I think the biggest thing uh, about the smart uh, startup space in Bangladesh is, is that we have just started uh, uh, this trend in Bangladesh and we are trying out a lot of new things. Uh, we are failing fast but we are learning very quickly and we are coming up with interesting ideas all over the place and across, across different spectrum of um, social and economic activities and, and that's very encouraging and interesting to see. I think the biggest thing that startups can do now uh, is to prepare themselves for the future and startups are in the future uh, of business and it is the future business and it is important that they shift their attitude from being local to being global and being global is not only connecting with global also adapting the global attitude and, and the global startup attitude is about openness and embracing ideas and embracing everything that comes in and, and, and that is something that our startups need to do to open up to the world. Not everybody is focused on using technology to create a business. Some use technology for the social good to make life better for everyone. Here in Bangladesh, quite a few startups in Dhaka use the power of the internet to further close the digital divide and connect a vast number of unconnected people to improve their quality of life. So let's take a look at these people who see tremendous potential in changing lives through technology. Obviously we understand that technology is uh, being used as a tool to solve certain social problems and Ashoka recognized that and appreciates that. So um, historically and moving forward into the future, our challenge is going to be to identify these um, social entrepreneurs who are using technology to transform their community as well as the respective nations. Um, I believe DNET um, and Dr. Ananya Raihan is a prime example um, of, of a fellow who is using technology to transform um, the society. Uh, one of our flagship programs is Aponjan. Uh, it's a email, email service for expecting a new mothers and also their family members. Uh, when a mother is registered, she receives services for 86 weeks, starting from pregnancy up to one year of baby's age. So services are offered through voice messages or uh, text messages and also a mother can call and consult with the doctor. Maya is the first website that has been dedicated to the women in Bangladesh. It has got everything a woman will need in her entire life, starting from uh, a guideline for during the times of pregnancy, recipe page, beauty page, medical advice. It is basically the the source of information that will make a woman uh, take make better uh, decisions in her life. She'll she'll have better choices in her life. So. We are getting business support, but we would really, really love to reach out and, you know, um, come um, form partnerships or uh, with other NGOs and get more like support, not just financially, but also in order to uh, expand our reach. Thing 
we heard about from actually somebody who visited us from the Harvard School of Public Health was how people were using Android phones to walk around slums, and in this case in Mumbai, map toilets to figure out all the different toilets that existed in one slum. After this person came here and presented to us, we thought, you know, the slums at this point are in a bit of a black hole to us, so it would actually be really helpful if we went to slums, mapped out BRAC's programs, community gathering sites, and other community resources that existed. Um, in Dhaka, there's so many different nonprofits working in slums. A lot of times they're working right on top of each other, and coordination is a big problem. So this last summer, we had several interns come um, from India, from the United States, actually with their own Android phones. And so we were able to use uh, open source technology, open data kit from Google to um, make a quick survey. They went out here into the slum over about a three-week period. They mapped uh, probably a hundred different community sites, including schools, madrasas, police stations, um, mobile money agents, all sorts of different things, and put it on a digital map that's now openly available online.